Hey folks, quick disclaimer about Greasy Says, my new show about being a game developer for 15 years who's brown. Okay, Greasy Says contains explicit language, adult situations, and viewer discretion is strongly advised. Right? Greasy Says is supposed to be a comedic take on what it's like to be in the gaming industry from my perspective, but I'm not out here trying to make people feel uncomfortable just for the sake of it. So, to sum it up, I have a potty mouth. Don't let your kids listen to this shit. And kings and queens above 18 only. Let's try that. All right. Lay is. Haha, <laughs> let's get this party started. High death with the professional. Lazy says. Greasy said. Greasy says. Greasy says. Does anybody out here know what the fuck Greasy said? Greasy says. Greasy says. Does anybody out here know just what the fuck Greasy said? What up, people? And welcome back to Greasy Says. It's my show about being a brown game developer for 15 years. All the trials and tribulations. All the contracts and stipulations. And we're here to talk about the gaming industry, make fun of the gaming industry, have a little bit of fun, kick it. Thank you to everyone who's been listening. I know a lot of people tuned in in the beginning and it kind of fell down and some people are catching up. I get it. I get it. People are busy. People now getting a little vaccine and shit. So people starting to go out and drink and smoke and blaze and fuck and do all the things that they wanted to do for the last year. Live your life. But be safe. Don't be a jackass. Anybody see that uh, Disney lightsaber? So many questions. How does it work? How long is it? Uh, does it have a lithium ion rechargeable battery when will it break a crazy question how how many lawyers did it take to make that happen right I mean shit to me the Disney Star Wars merger and the, the Marvel Disney merger I don't even want to think about how many fucking lawyers there were. I would get nervous going in that room. Like how many of y'all, how many people in this room actually have eaten human flesh before? I I would be terrified. But it's going to be dope. I can't wait to see who gets it first. Because the shit is going to be broken for sure. And it's going to be expensive as shit. But it's so cool. It's so cool. Anyway. My name is Greasy, a.k.a. M. I don't want to welcome you all to Greasy Says, Greasy People. Welcome back to Greasy Says. Real quick, I want to do a special thank you to the focus group who helped me out before I put this show out. Before episode one even hit the streets, these people were helping me out listening to the first passes of this show and giving me feedback telling me how far i had gone they were my focus group yo focus testing is a part of gaming a very necessary part it's also a brutal part it's when you hear a lot of the shit you don't want to hear but it's so important to get in your your shit right and get in your message correct and getting what you're trying to put out there put out there in the best possible light so people can soak it in in the right way you know what i'm saying so I want to give a special shout out to the focus group that helped me with Greasy Says. Vian, Patrick, Caleb, and Alicia. Hi, Felicia. I love y'all. Thank you. Without y'all, I might have put out the first few episodes with the word cunt in it. That would have been rough. I never knew people were so hung up on the word Uh-oh. cunt. But this is America. It's, it's not like where I come from or like in Europe where uh-uh. is like not even that big of a deal. Pussy's worse than uh-uh. in some places, but not here. 
So that was one thing that the focus group helped me narrow in on was, yo, you can't, uh, you know, it's okay in some circles. We get you. We know you. You cool with us. But some people might be mad offended by that word. I think even people who use that word told me, hey, uh, you might not want to use that word. Uh, also, want to shout out my bro, who was kind of a focus tester too, who was like, yo, you are going to get canceled for that Leah. You want to have sex with, with Leah from Stardew Valley or whatever. Even though it was a joke, he was like, you are going to get fucking canceled. I still did it because enough people told me the other, the other way, like it wasn't that bad. Even ladies told me it wasn't that bad. Even queer folk told me it wasn't that bad. So I was like, okay, let me weigh my options. Let me weigh my focused test data and make a move. So I still put that out, but I still want to shout him out. Thank you, bro. Uh, funny thing is my cousin came later and he was like, yo, that thing about which character you want to have sex with, that shit was weird. So you were kind of right. You get to say, I told you so. I told you so. I told you so. I told you so, you dumb bitch. I told you so. Does anybody out there know what the fuck Breezy said? All right, let's kick this show off, yo. Today's key is... Hey, in case y'all motherfuckers forgot, you can ask me to do a key for the show. Jeff did it. He told me to do uh, a whole tone scale. Worked out pretty great in episode five. So if you have a key, hit me up. Greasy says on Instagram. Greasy says on TikTok. MQ on Twitter. Just hit me up. Be like, yo, I want a B minor scale or whatever. Okay. All right. Time. Uh, oh, Greasy. Tell us about the different stages of development. What do you mean, like the, the stages of game development? Uh, yep. <clears throat> ah, the stages of development. The great lie. The great assumption. I'm sure that each game development studio calls each stage of development something different. Maybe some studios have many stages, depending on what types of games they make. Since post-launch is its own animal, on most games these days with your games as services malarkey. There's a huge difference between making Mario Odyssey and making Outriders or Overwatch. But if I had to simplify it, I'd probably break the stages of game development into three thoughts. One, we got to build some shit. Two, we building some shit. Three, we built the shit. Now what? Some call it pre-production, production, production, and post-production. I call it that too. Like making movies. But unlike making movies, the same team will work on the same game throughout all stages of development. Not just pop in, in and out. I think it's very important to mentally prepare for each of those stages. And I think for a brown creative type, it's especially important to be prepared emotionally for what each of these stages mean. So, we gotta build some shit. Sounds great to me. Personally, this is my favorite part of development. This is when you let the ideas fly. This is when the juices flow their thickest. This is when you can create with reckless abandon and you can dream big. And if you have experience, real talk, you'll dream like medium. Have fun during the stage. Don't forget to enjoy these moments because pre-production is usually the shortest period of creative freedom that you have on a project because the suits in charge want to get it into production and get the game out the door as fast as they possibly can. They got to make money. It's also why huge companies crank out sequels. Less production, less new ideas, easier to clone, easier to make money. Tell a coder to relax during pre-production. It's really fun to fuck with them like that. Tell them like, come on, when they start bitching about pipe wrenches and overflow valves and shit. Let them shake their heads and bide their time. They'll be in control soon. 
and harsh realities are just on the horizon. Fucking ride that pony because it isn't getting any younger. As a creative person, pre-production is where you fill up your bar to deploy during production. Pre-production is when you build up your pylons and gather enough resources to launch a massive attack. Fears the man that lives next door. Fears my neighbor. And he gets me down. It's the calm before the storm. But it's also a storm in its own right. Okay. Now we're building some shit. You are under control of the producers. You will adhere to the schedule. Your grand ideas will be subject to editing. The great editing has begun. Despair. 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 No, for real. When production starts, it's time to switch your thinking. Once your lofty creative goals hit a harsh and honest schedule, shit gets how real. A team can only get so much work done in a given time. So get ready to let some things go and get ready to pick what things really matter to you. Take your wins as they come and let your L's go. It'll keep you sane. Production can feel like a huge bummer if you don't mentally prepare yourself. Mentally, you should be in famine mode. Every little crumb you get towards your initial idea is a battle won. Live in the battles. Live in the now. Let go of emotion. This is also a good time to make sure that your extracurriculars are in order. What do I mean by extracurriculars? Uh, What you got going on outside of the project, outside of the game. What are you looking forward to at the end of a day? Or on the weekend. Make sure you're eating well. Working out. Doing that fucking mayonnaise yoga. It's going to be easier to take losses. Sit through long ass sprint planning meetings. And listen in to fucking producers and coders drone on every day. If you have other shit going on in your life. When times are stressful. And demands are high. Your side hustle. And your extracurriculars. Have to be kicking off full blast. You got to take care of yourself. Okay, we built this shit. Now what? Post-production can sometimes feel like an existential crisis. It can also be a time when you finally realize how much you've let yourself go during production. It's a moment of reckoning. This is usually when folks start looking for new gigs or start looking for which project they want to work on next. For some folks, it's the beginning of their damn job. Supporting a game post-launch is a shit ton of work. And usually taxes people maybe even years past the game's release. If you ever worked on fucking DLC, you know what I'm talking about. A negative that I see happen during post-production is when all the bottom feeders come out. Post-production to some people is a license to bitch and a license to backstab. Usually post-morts happen during post-production and a post-mort if you've never been in one is like a giant bitch session with no therapist in the room imagine going to alcoholics anonymous with no leader in the room yeah that's what post-mort feels like everything that went wrong with the game every person that you crossed every slight that you felt gets bottled up inside during all of production and then like Mentos in a fucking Pepsi bottle erupts from even the most mild-mannered individual. And if reviews are on the table, shit, brace yourself. I've seen people who were chummy at the beginning of production turn on each other when production, uh, when post-production and review time comes around. So my advice to all the brown people out there who are making games, listen up brown people, be extra nice to people leading up and during post-production. This is the rule. Be helpful and be seen. I know it sounds ridiculous, right? But unfortunately, when people are exhausted and frustrated, they revert to socioeconomic norms, which means they will quicker focus their ire on black and brown folks on a team. We may be just as exhausted as they are, but our exhaustion can be interpreted as a bad attitude. 
So stay ahead of that shit. Same goes for the ladies, unfortunately. All of a sudden, you are quote unquote emotional and shit. So keep smiling. Keep being nice and shit. Be the be a pillar of the community, if you will. And make sure it's seen. No private pick-me-ups and shit. Now that you've built the shit and you've been through all the stages, you get to do it all over again. Starting with my favorite pre-production. And the wheel turns. On and on and on and on and on and on and on. Hopefully I've given you enough here to emotionally prepare yourself for each stage of development. If you have tips and tricks for coping, let me know. Because I could always stand to learn some new ones, for real. Yeah, the stage of development. Stages of production, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'll tell you one thing about it, real talk. Completely fucking inaccurate. Somebody say they're in pre-production or production or post-production. You'd think like, okay, yeah, you know, you can't do any production tasks in post-production. You're supposed to be done. Oh, you can't do any production tasks in pre-production because you ain't started yet. You know, you're still getting your ideas together. Bullshit. Call bullshit on that. I have never worked on any game where the production schedule has been you know, strictly adhered to. It's just not possible, man. The shit is alive. A game is alive. A creative endeavor is alive. It's constantly changing. You can't, you can't try to put that shit in a box. Motherfucker, you crazy? Producers, producers are always trying to put shit in a box because that's their job. But it's impossible to put a creative thing in a box. Well, I guess when it's done, it's in a box. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I can't tell you. So, If you don't know, at the end of a game, there's an alpha and a beta process. Alpha usually means you're trying to fix as many bugs as possible. QA should be king. Uh, No new features. Just, you know, fix the the shit that's broken and the shit you already made during production, right? And then there's beta, which is like, really, nobody touches this thing. We're fixing major bugs only, trying to get this thing out the door. Uh, Question. To all the developers out there, if you're, if you're out there and you're listening, anytime, have you ever fucking been through alpha or beta where you weren't adding production shit? Was there ever a time in alpha, like you've never experienced someone coming up to you in alpha and being like, hey, can you just, uh, uh, can you just change all the colors on this jacket? Or, hey, uh, can you, we got this new partner. Can you put a fucking monster energy drink into the hands of, of the people in the background or some shit like that? Or, ah, uh, fucking Zimmerman came in with his new, a new violin piece. Can you throw that in there somewhere? There are, people disrespect Alpha so fucking hard. Like, I'm surprised QA doesn't come in like blasting on you motherfuckers, like stressed out. Because they trying to, test a game that's supposed to be done and you come in and you sneaking in a bunch of extra shit under the table unacceptable they must feel like tsa you know just like not smiling at nobody like yeah just give me a fucking id all right keep it moving keep them don't do not hold up the line put your shoes in the fucking bin don't hold up the line don't even start with me ma'am karen don't even fucking start with me today you know what i mean like i mean it's a it Alpha should be the time that QA is getting militant. But people are always sneaking shit in Alpha. Always. Always. Never fails. Never fucking fails. But you know what? Uh, you know what? Let me, let me take a stance of mercy. And talk about focus testing. Because I talked about that in the beginning. Because my focus group helped me out so much. Uh, focus testing is something... I've struggled with personally uh, because it really is the rawest feedback that you can get about what you've created. It can hurt, right? Because you might listen in on a focus test or you might get the results of a focus test and you might think, oh man, I made this awesome game mechanic. The way this motherfucker jumps through the air is the best jumping I've ever seen. It's better than Mario jumping. 
And then you get the data back from the focus test. And the focus group is like, this jumping is the worst jumping I've ever fucking seen. Whoever made this jumping is a fucking idiot. Uh, I would rather play a game with no jumping than play this game with its shitty jumping mechanics. It, it, it hurts. It hurts. It's worse than being friend zoned. Uh, it's worse than getting kicked in the, in the private parts in the VV or poo poo. Worse. But it's so real. It's raw and it's real and you need to hear it. Uh, and focus testing, in my opinion, should happen throughout development. Like you should focus, te- focus test your fucking pre production ideas. You should focus test. Every mechanic you come up with, you should focus test your fucking economy system. You should focus test the characters in your game. You should do it all. You should do it all. The entire way through every stage of development. Pre, mid, and post. Um, because it keeps you honest. It keeps you, it keeps you in, in reality, too. So when you're making a game, you can kind of get lost in your own little world that you've created around yourself with you and your team. And you might not be thinking about what the customer might think or what people outside might think, especially if, if you're a creative motherfucker, like an artist, audio person, designer, that kind of shit. If you, once you're not like code and a technical person, you get lost in your little bubble. And focus testing is a pin to pop that fucking bubble because the bubble ain't safe. The bubble can't carry you across the ocean. Okay, you got to build a fucking boat to get across the ocean. Your bubble ain't going to do it. Okay. One wind and that bubble fucking gone. Um, so I would recommend to you, get comfortable. Get comfortable with focus testing and get comfortable with that level of honest feedback and raw feedback and feedback that don't care about your feelings. Uh, it'll help you make better games. Promise you that. Um, that is, but also, also, I've worked with companies who live and die by anything a focus group that they're all about the data it doesn't fucking work like that okay sometimes when you create a fucking creative project and it's it's heart and soul data doesn't fucking matter okay so i'm i know i'm, I'm kind of contradicting myself here but as important as focus testing is it shouldn't cloud your your vision too much and it's not the be all and end all of opinion because focus tests can be very different groups of people. And you don't know when somebody having a shitty day and decide to just take their shit out on your game. So it's important, but grain of salt that shit every time. It makes me think, uh, sp- speaking of post-production and stages of production and shit like that, how about all this shit that's been going on with CD Projekt Red? Creators of hits such as The Witcher and s- semi-flops that may or may not recover, like see, uh, like Cyberpunk 2077. Um, you know, I talked about the jackasses out in the public um, sending death threats to these people back in like episode two or some shit. Uh, and a bunch of people left, so, you know, blessed the designer who stood up and was like, fuck you guys, you fucking assholes, don't threaten us. But like, mad people are leaving that company. And then recently, uh, my wife tells me, check this fucking article out. And then, what's his name? Andrei tomnov uh left, uh, uh, if you ask me, probably got let go. Or like, you know, uh... What do you call that shit in the army? Um, what do they like fire you, but oh, an honorable discharge? This motherfucker got an honorable discharge. He left the company after a bunch of employees was like, this guy's a piece of shit. Uh, he's, he's a bully. He's an asshole. Um, and we don't like working with him. We feel threatened and we're not having a good time and it's not fun. Um, Imagine what what the post mort for fucking cyber twenty cyberpunk twenty twenty. Ugh, slow down, man. Slow down. 
Imagine what the post-mort for Cyberpunk 2077 was like. It must have been... Like, people wrote Bibles. Like, long-ass, you know, theses on... Uh, on for this post-mort. Because they, d- developers must have been treated like shit. Their stages of development must have been all over the place. They must have been in pre-pro, then back in production, then back in pre-pro, and then we got post-production, this other shit, and then back to production. Who knows how long alpha was? Who knows how long beta was? Probably too short because production was way too long uh, because they overscoped their game. But um, I think it's good that people stepped up and was like, this dude is a dick. Why do we have to work with this guy? Just because he's the director of the Witcher 3 series? Yeah, okay, you're you're cool and all, but like you're making it a horrible place to work. You make incredible games, but why you gotta be such a you know, uh oh. You know what I mean? Um so I mean I feel bad for that guy that he had to leave. He probably is paid, so he's probably gonna be all right. Um, and he's gonna do a little soul searching, it seems. Like he he wants to what do you say? Uh Tomas Kjovic said, I'm going to continue working on myself. Changing behavior is a long and arduous project pro- process, but I'm not giving up and I hope to change. Um, you know, that's, an, you know, he's stepping away with some, with some grace. Uh, but I kind of also understand why game developer, like high level creative directors and stuff like that become such huge dicks because you work on these games long enough, especially if you put your heart into a series like he probably has for The Witcher. Anybody gets in your way, you're going to destroy them after a certain amount of time because you're tired of the bullshit. Um, so I could see why he's such a prick. They have like a few pricks like that in the industry. High level creative people who are just impossible to work with. But um, you also don't have to put up with their shit. Remember, tell that motherfucker to fuck off. Tell that motherfucker to fuck off. Tell that motherfucker to fuck off. Tell that motherfucker to. We got some listener submissions. Some people uh, wrote in about certain episodes. Uh, and I'm just going to read some of the comments because they're awesome. Uh, back on uh, episode four, I talked about working from home and how it's like the future and it should be the future. And it's a bunch of bullshit to go into an office. And a listener wrote in and said, also, I will never go back to an office. I can't. Working, for, for, uh, working from home for years, then just going into the office to visit for a few days was not easy. It's not for me. The very air is poison. The light, the fluorescent light. Never again. I didn't embellish that shit. That's exactly what they wrote. I'm telling you. Working from home is the shit, and an office is bullshit. All right. And then, uh, hold up, let me find this. It was a tweet. Why do I suck at using my own phone? I've had this phone forever. I still suck at using my own phone. That makes sense. I'm terrible at social media, y'all. Like, you should laugh at me. I'm just, like, so weak at it, man. All right, so here, all right, here, uh, here we go. Uh, from the Working From Home episode as well. About who, uh, I asked people who's tickling your pickle. Uh, in, in the lady depar- game lady department. Or who's fluffing your muff in the male game uh, character department. And I got a couple answers. Here we go. Always thirsting for Ezio forever. Nathan Drake meh. Geralt didn't do it for me until the Netflix series. So shout out to Abs McGee. So that might not count. Uh, sorry, I added the Abs McGee part. They didn't say this. Uh, they continue. Also adding Lee from the Walking Dead game to the list. I was crushing on him. Okay, pause. Lee Everett from Walking Dead is one of the greatest black characters in any game ever, in my opinion. Period. 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 
if you don't know who Lee Everett is and you've never played the Walking Dead series that from those shitheads at Telltale, uh, go play that game. The first one. Uh, Mind blowing, in my opinion. It's probably kind of clunky, you know, nowadays because of technology has progressed and it, it look really old school, but it's a fantastic story. Anyway, then another person jumps in and says, there's a serious lack of Cullen from the, I'm talking, now I'm back to talking about the comment about uh, thirsting on Ezio and Nathan Drake and whatever. Here's a reply. There's a serious lack of Cullen from this list and I'm offended. And then it's like, OMG Cullen. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely Cullen. He always made me swoon. So Cullen, I don't even know who the fuck Cullen is. I'm looking at this shit like, who the fuck is Cullen? But it from the screenshot, it looks like it's from Dragon Age, maybe Origins or some shit. Um, yeah. So that was, I think that was a particularly funny thread for me to see. Uh, a thirst session uh, on some male game characters. Thank you very much, listeners. Keep them coming. Love it. Remember. Reach out to me, Greasy Says on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Just message me or whatever. And MQ, M C U E, on everything else. On like uh, Twitter, where I suck. Apparently, I suck at Twitter. So you could hit me up there and laugh at how bad I am. Okay, great. Thanks. Before we go, we always got to make a little bit of time for some. Medicate and meditate. It wouldn't be right to just leave on a high greasy note. You know, we got to bring the grease down. And I got this uh, idea for a meditation exercise to bring the grease down. Uh, we're going to take a word of self-doubt. I came up with this. If I stole this from somebody, sorry, I didn't mean to. Take a word that's, that you use for self-doubt and turn it into an acronym, uh, um, a positive acronym to boost yourself up so for example let me pick one out of the blue right um fool like you might think to yourself that one of those when the when the demons start coming up when the hater within starts bubbling you might you might think to yourself man i'm a fool but you could turn that around into i am a fucking over oscillating luxury that makes absolutely no sense. Let's try harder. You're a fool. Uh, I am free of obsolete lessons. Does that make sense? Uh, we could we could do better. Uh, I'm a fool. Fear of only losing. Damn, I'm bad at this. Uh. I'm a fool. I'm a functional, organized, open leader. Boom. Boom. We turned fool, a negative connotation, a negative thought into a positive acronym. What was it? Fool. I'm a... Fuck, I already forgot what it was. But we did the exercise. That's what's important. You may have cheated on the key there, brother. Just saying. Well, greasy people, that's it. It's a wrap once again. Take that shit off the grill, because we done. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. Yo, before we go, like I always do, I want y'all to go link me on fucking social media. I'll tell you where. Greasy says G-R-E-A-S-Y-S-A-Y-S on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. MQ, that's M-C-U-E on Spotify, Bandcamp, and SoundCloud. Uh, and on Twitter. Hit me up. Ask me questions about uh, this episode, any of the previous episodes. Yeah, just, just say hi. Uh, you know, if you just want to shoot shit. Um... Don't hit me up about joining military groups or military pages like uh, Home Skillet over here did. 
I guess I brought that on myself because I use some hashtags about military. But I'm good on the military uh, join up there, brother. Thanks anyway. So yeah. Hit me up on all those social media angles. And I'll see y'all next episode, hopefully. Greasy people. Thanks for coming out. Like, subscribe, comment. Give me feedback. Tell me to go myself. And until next time, it's me, Greasy. Checking out with the room key. I'm checking out with the room key. What the fuck, Greasy, say? I'm checking out with the room key. What the fuck, Greasy, say? Hey, yo, I'm checking out with the room key. Light is.